Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be having a look at this really cool um, sci-fi type weird abstract animation and uh, how to put it together using geometry nodes. Okay, so welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, sorry, it's been a while, been a bit busy this side of the screen, uh, but we're back now. So for today's tutorial, we're using Blender 3.5. Uh, you need to use Blender 3 onwards for this one because of the geometry nodes. So if you don't have Blender 3 onwards, be sure to download that before starting this. Uh, as always, if there are any problems with the video, if you're struggling to follow, then drop a comment below and I'll try and help out as best I can. Otherwise, if it's um, if it's the resolution, have a look in your settings because sometimes YouTube likes to downgrade the resolution on these videos. So have a look and just see what your settings actually are. And if you need to, pump them up to as high a resolution as you can. So let's dive straight into this. And first of all, we've got our default cube. We're not going to delete it. Instead, we're going to go in to... Uh, geometry nodes, uh, find the group input, and we're going to delete that. So now what we're to do is replace with, with an icosphere. Now, as we go, you might actually see that there are lots of opportunity here to not just use an icosphere, you can use pretty much any shape you like. Now, it gives you initially this kind of diamondy shape. You want to up the resolution to subdivisions two, sometimes three, three works well, but two works pretty good. And the beauty of geometry nodes is that you can change all this to your heart's content. Uh, so we want to change this from a triangulated uh, tri-element formation into something more like a football. So to achieve that, you type in dual mesh, slot it in, and you've immediately got a football. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the wireframe. So this is a really easy setup. So it's meshed curve. Plug that into there. And then curve to mesh. Plug that into there. Now we want is a curved circle, and we want to plug that one into here. And this just creates that wireframe. Immediately goes crazy because radius is one, and radius of the curved circle is one. So you want to make that quite small. So 0 0.05 works quite well. But again, play with the see how it's content. Move this over here, and we'll put in a set material ready for later. Okay, that's looking. Good. So now what we want to do is we want to fill these faces. So we're going to use the same setup over here. So let's move this over to this section here. And what we want to do now is we want to realize instances. Realize instances. Put that into there. In fact, let's put a join geometry up here so you can see what's going on as we as we progress. Plug that into there, so that just joins these up. Really very powerful tool, geometry nodes. And in fact, whilst we're here, Shift D, drag that down. So they both got these two lines have their own set material lines. Now, now that we've done that, we want to split our edges, plug that into there, and then what we want to say is scale. Scale not instances, we want to scale elements. And we'll do a quick play with that. You can see what happens when you do that. You are changing the shape. So let's make that a bit lower, make it 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Yeah, you know what, 0.8 works fine. But now what we want to do is we want to offset these. So it makes it a bit more interesting. Now to achieve that, we need a normal. And let's do that. Let's do actually set position as well before we dive into the normals. So you put the set position between scale and set material. And as you can see, once you do that, you can obviously change the position. But as I say, we want it going normal to these faces. So we need a bit more control over it. So let's put a normal into here. And as you do, see there, it's, it's put it out quite far. So let's put a bit more control in here. And what we want to do now is we want a noise. We want to vector math that. And we set that to multiply. It's easy if you put that into the lower socket there, and it'll make more sense in a minute. That is giving us a bit more of a bouncy shape to it. So that's color ramp. Plug the color ramp in there. Bring that in a bit. 
Oh, it's over here so you can actually see what's going on. And I tend to find that having a little math node in there as well is not a bad idea. So let's make that multiply. And there you go. Looking, looking good so far. But again, as you can see, that is only faces. So we want to extrude them as well. So we want an extrude node. Plug into there, and we'll just drone grow that to something fairly small, fairly, fairly tiny. 0 0.1, let's make it 0 0.05. There we go. And that is fundamentally our effect. And of course, as I say, you can play around with some of these values. So if we can update that, you can really make it quite crazy. I think for now, let's just leave it as is. Now, to create the kind of inner core, uh, my first thought was to use the same icosphere, but because it's so low, you can't really get a proper circle, a proper sphere out of it. So we're going to use another icosphere, and we're going to let's line these up a bit more, make it a bit neater. Okay, let's drag you over here, Shift D. And let's plug you into there, you into here, and we want to pump you up to something fairly high, yeah, and downgrade your radius. And again, as I say, you can play with that as much as you like. And that's that is the fundamentals of how to set this up. So let's put some quick materials to this. So the first one is the core. This second one, we'll do wire. And the final one, we'll call it faces. And now let's just assign these. So core, wire, faces. Go over to our shading tab. Let's go into that image there. Uh, let's, do, let's do it inside out. Let's do the core first. So the core, we're going to, yeah, let's keep with the Let's move this up a bit so you can actually see what's going on here. Let us do a noise. Let's make that dark. You can see that straight away it's affecting that region. And let's put the color into the emission tab. And what we want to do is do a, actually, Shift T, or, yep, or Control T, sorry, Control T. Make sure your Node Wrangler is on. And you can see how that looks there just play with that but now we want to give it some proper colors so color ramp plug that into there let's bring this one up to about here make that red make that something pretty big 20 refer back to my original so I had it on quite a high number okay 50. Let's bring that right in, bring that up a bit, down a bit, there like that. And again, as I say, actually, if you were so well inclined, you could set that to four and have a, uh, make that animated. Let's let the computer catch up for a second. There we go. You can animate that if you wanted to. Let's move that across to here. And add a bit more. Computer's taking a moment just to catch up there. Make sure your bloom's on. Ambient occlusion. Da da da. Rough space. Let's turn that over to that side. There you, there you go. That's starting to look a bit more, a bit more interesting. There we go. Of course, you can spend forever on this, but we're going to only spend a few minutes. Uh, finally, let's put a bump node in on this. Plug that into there. Put that into the normal and plug that into the height and that should give that a bit more of a an interesting there you, go. you can just about see what's going on there you can change that value there we go let's down the roughness a bit uh, yeah let's play around with this 
Again, you can spend forever on that. But that just gives you a general idea. So that could be like a star or something. Uh, our next one, let's go to the wires. This is quite a straightforward and easy one. Base color, let's say CO, CO, CO. Oh. Is silver. Up the metallic. Down the roughness. And in fact, let's go back into geometry nodes. Turn that on. Zoom in. And this is where the beauty of geometry nodes really comes into its own. So it's that one there. 0.01, there we go, looking pretty, pretty good, pretty good so far. Let's go back to shading, and finally, let's just do something interesting with these faces. So again, we're not getting rid of the principled BDF, uh, let's tune that down a little bit, let's up the metallic, let's down the roughness, and let's add a Voronoi. into the emissions, color ramp again, plug that into here. Now, this is, uh, let's see, so there's that one, pads, Minkowski, yep, cool. Uh, let's up the scale on that. Oh, that's uh, control T again, set to object. And then what we do is we just peel this back and make that a nice, make it a nice red. The emission strength down to about there. And even add a few more bits if you like. See, some of these are coming out as red and others are not. And again, we can add a little bit of a bump in there. Just doing this very quick and dirty. And that is essentially the layout. And again, if you were so inclined, you could animate that. you wanted to but yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it um so yeah so that's that is your fundamental um object and of course you could do anything you like to this you can change it you can as i say you can go to geometry nodes and if we go into this point over here you can up the subdivisions and adjust that as much as you like so that was pretty good so that's uh yeah let's go and Spend a bit more time on that and uh, yeah, we'll get back to it. Okay, so just to finish up on today's tutorial, uh, I've obviously taken this away and done a couple of extra uh, magic tricks to it. Uh, most obvious things is the background. Uh, what we have on here is we create a starry background using a really simple process. We uh, use a Voronoi texture into the color ramp on the world settings, by the way, uh, multiply an emission. And what that does is it can give us this really cool Kind of glowy star effect obviously you've got to have your uh, scale up very very high and to create this kind of nebula effect what i've got is i've uh, pumped a principal volume node into uh, the volume and uh, used a mixture of gradient and noise to try and create this kind of misty kind of starry but and then put a, a couple of light sources in there uh, just to kind of give it that extra extra bit of interest uh, fundamentally there's nothing really much changed elsewhere just a bit of playing around with the um the uh the pads there so if we go into here you can see that really it's, it's just a case of just playing with these settings until you get something that looks really interesting and uh i'll go back to it actually the geometry nodes if you go into here you can up your number of subdivisions uh it's that one there isn't it and you can make some really very interesting interesting shapes out of it now if you remember at the beginning of the video uh we have a slightly different animation fundamentally it's exactly the same in fact we have it right here uh the only key differences on this one is if we go into geometry nodes and we click our section here what you might notice is there's an extra branch down here where we have this grid 
And let's just turn this off so we can see it a bit clearer. We've got this grid going on down here with um, separate geometry uh, and then just offset these, ex rather extrude these faces to a noise. And that kind of gives you this kind of bumpy effect. And then obviously apply a material in there. So lots of options going on in here. And if we look to what's going on there, let's just go into our shading tab, uh, go to the uh, inner glow. Let's turn that on so you can see it. There we go. I can see also there that I've had some, uh, played a little bit with the camera settings to kind of give it this really deep, deep look and a focus on image. So everything else a bit blurry. Um, but yeah, no, it's looking pretty good. And uh, oh, yeah, let's just go back to it. So we've got in here, we've got a, there we go. Fundamentally, that's this inner core here, isn't it? We've got this kind of really cool glowing effect going on. See there, we've got a layer weight to a color ramp. Play around with that. Just muck around with it until you have something that you're happy with. And the uh, the glowing sections there, they're from this Voronoi texture. F2 Chevichag, looking pretty good. And I think these outer pads here are, uh, there we go. Go to them there. Same thing again, F2, very, very similar, very similar setup. And you just, as I say, you just play around with the settings to your heart's content and don't really need that there, that's gone. And obviously we can, we can animate this one as well. So that's what this is, that's what this is doing. A really cool animation. So all, all I've done to achieve that is I've put a circle. You can see it there, bezel circle. Assign the camera to it. Make sure the camera is still pointing at the target. So here's your settings. Follow that path and make sure it tracks to the target, which is it's still called a cube. Uh, and it will always stay locked onto that. So that's, that, that will just go around forever. And obviously this... Bouncy bit here, that's a bit of animation effect on the geometry nodes. Let's turn that on so it can show you that as well. And here we go. Go into your noise texture and just, yeah, that's that W factor. That's just on a nice backwards and forwards. And uh, yeah, you just play around with all these settings and you can end up with something really cool. Really cool like that. So that pretty much, as I said, that pretty much concludes it. Um, yeah, if you have a go at this yourself, in fact, let's turn that hate it. I hate the fact that it does that. It has this outline. If you have a play around with it yourself, um, then uh, please do share. Share. I'd love to see what uh, people are working on. And um, yeah, until next time, have a good weekend.